Okay, so I was in the middle of doing a recovery and realized that this is the perfect time to do my first video. Here we are uh, in the middle of a recovery. I'm uh, replacing a thermal expansion valve on the indoor unit. You see I've got my rig set up here. I'm close to being done with my recovery. Seven pound, 13 ounce factory charge, plus whatever they may have added for the line set. See I've got my fan blowing on the recovery tank. Helps keep it cool so it doesn't overheat and turn off my pump. We're also going to be removing this filter dryer and replacing it with a 3 8 inch copper stem and moving that filter dryer to the indoor unit. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and get this recovery finished and uh, get my uh, nitrogen flowing and then we'll get that ex uh, yeah, we'll get that liquid line dryer added there and move on to the next part. Okay so we finished our recovery. We pretty much hit the nail on the head. 7 pounds, 13 ounce factory charge. I've got everything I need to go ahead and pull out my uh, liquid line dryer. I've uh, got my stem that's going to go in its place. i um, got my turbo torch with the proper head on it. And uh, importantly, I've got my bucket O rags to keep everything cool. And uh, we're going to get that thing changed out. We have gotten our old one out and we have installed our stem. Uh, we even closed off the uh, condenser coil and did a quick leak check on it just so that I can go ahead and put it back together and uh, move on to the upstairs portion of this job. I have my trusty TXV, got my evacuation stuff on deck, can't wait to use my new true blue kit. Um, we're going to get this condenser put back together and then we're going to go upstairs and start working on the TXV. We are upstairs, third floor of a condo building actually. Here we are looking at our evaporator coil with our faulty TXV. I lucked out on this one. The uh, TXV is all bolt-on. I won't be doing any soldering up here. So we're going to go ahead and uh, get this thing swapped out and um, go do ourselves a pressure test and uh, get our evacuation started. So I'm gonna go ahead and swap this thing out and uh, we'll pick it up from there. We've got our uh, new expansion valve in there, all pretty and shiny. Um, got our bulb on. Uh, I will probably go ahead and throw some foam on that. Um, I know Linux doesn't usually require the foam because they say the bulb is not in the airflow, but I say, uh, couldn't hurt. Old TXV with the old washers. Uh, we did put new washers in everything, of course. And uh, now we're going to go downstairs. We're going to hook up some nitrogen. We're going to pump this puppy up and let it sit for a few. And uh, then we're going to get on with our evacuation. Okay, kids. So something I forgot to make mention of on my last clip was that uh, after surveying the situation upstairs, I decided that it was too confined a space to put the uh, dryer filter up there so I went ahead and put the dryer filter out here um, it is still outside the condenser so the machine will be easier to service next time the circuit has to be opened as long as it doesn't involve the condenser we can just pump it down to do what we got to do um, I was real careful not to burn the ends of my dryer filter so that uh, corrosion shan't be a problem we're going to uh, finish getting this thing wired together. Uh, I can go ahead and pressurize it now and uh, get my evacuation going and uh, we'll uh, pick it up from there. All right, kids, so we've moved on to the evacuation portion of the job. Um, I took a few minutes to read through my uh, True Blue Evacuation Tools uh, book just to make sure I was hooking everything up correctly. Got my hose hooked up there uh, as well as hooked up here. You see I made a little rig. Uh, because the condenser wall was in the way. I couldn't get the hose to go on right there. Um, I did test, however, to make sure I could get the uh, Schrader valve back in once I'm done with this process. Uh, I also made sure to pull the Schrader valve out of here as not to impede the uh, evacuation process. And you can see my micron gauge going on right there, um, as well as my app for said micron gauge right here. Um, you can see we're approaching 20 minutes. We're down to 2,400 microns. And this thing is just flying right along. Um, we did drift nitrogen from the time I opened the machine till the time I uh, started the evacuation, so I expect it to go pretty quickly. I also purged nitrogen through the system to make sure that it can go quickly. 
So uh, we're gonna go ahead and get this thing evacuated and then we're going to go in here and we're gonna use the leak check uh, decay test that this app also has to see how we did uh, with our uh, brazing to make sure there's no leaks. Once we're done with all that, we'll uh, go ahead and uh, get her charged up and see what she says. Uh, I'll try and get some of the decay test on video as well. Okay, due to time constraints, we've had to cut this one a little short. I went ahead and got the evacuation done, uh, let it sit for 10 minutes. Um, we stayed below 1,000, uh, everything was good there. Um, I went ahead and put my uh, factory charger Freon back into the machine. Um, I've had the machine running for a good 10 or 15 minutes now. It's a little chilly out here, but I think just warm enough to uh, get things correct. Uh, as you can see there, uh, I've hit my sub cool right on the head. Superheat continues to go down. Started out at about 30, but it's slowly going down. Everything else looks good. As you can see, that's my intake and discharge air on my condenser, not the actual uh, airflow of the air handler. Uh, love my field piece rig. Uh, makes the job so much easier. So we got this TXV changed. Everything's back up and running correctly. I uh, hope you guys enjoyed my first video. I'll uh, try and make one of the outdoor TXV I'm getting ready to go do as well.